what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so today we are going to be covering the global labs patch notes um there are actually a few interesting changes that we're going to talk about like the contribution points that are getting reduced and we're going to get some more in the future that's uh pretty awesome and worker promotions and they, like other quality of life things that they wanted to change along with sailing and bartering and uh, we'll get to that in a second so i just pulled up the notes but first i want to say thank you guys so much for all the support you guys are awesome and i like to do this on video when uh, you guys are actually sending these so with that said we're sending back the gifts today you guys are really awesome and all the materials that we get out of these random heart boxes uh we'll be using it for enhancing in the future so yeah you guys are gonna see it's like you're helping me make a video at some point all right so as usual the only thing i really worry about is uh misspelling someone's name when they sent it also guys uh if you are a person that sent all these gifts join the discord so i actually know who you are and so i can actually thank you and um yeah it's always cool just meeting people and actually being able to say hi to everyone in the community as well. Okay. Nice. Oh, I think that was a return box. Sweet. Orger. Indeed. Uh, I think one of those is a return box as well. Wait, no, we got another one. We're going to open all these eventually. Okay, so you know what it gives you? The 20 energy, and it also gives you... Wait, I think... Hold on. There's so much random garbage in my inventory that uh, I'm just like... It gives you another chocolate as well. Return box. One, two, three. Okay. I know I could copy paste it, but. Isn't there an. Like, there's no way to actually copy paste it in game. You have to, like, do some sort of, like, weird thing, like a shift A or something. It doesn't even show you. Sweet. Are you a World of Warcraft player by any chance? One, two, three. Did you uh, just throw some Scrabble letters down the stairs and make a name out of that one? Because there's a lot of letters we don't use normally. <laughs> you know it's actually difficult when i'm trying to like every time to make a new character right you're trying to make like some sort of name and basically everything is taken these days because they don't like in other mmos what they do is if you haven't played in a while your name will just go back into a pool and then people could take those again so uh this game apparently does not do that and so it's like if you took a name in like 2014, then uh, it's stuck there. Sweet, oh, a message. To be honest, I've never actually used this like whisper thing in game. People just message me on Discord if they need something. Also, yeah, I was like, 
I don't hate it. Some people like actually hate getting whispered in game. I don't care. As if, if you really need me, I figure you'll just hit me up on Discord because uh, that's how most streamers do it anyway. Also, if I in the future ever get someone's name wrong and just like send it to some random person, I really do apologize. I try my best not to misspell these. Also, for the record, if you send me like a barcode name, probably zero chance I'm getting it correct. So just throwing it out there. I feel like this name is like a Twitch emote I've seen before. Last two for today. All right, sweet. We finished that for today. I can't imagine people like choice or something or the bigger BDO streamers getting like literally hundreds I mean I don't know even know if they send them back or they just like eat them all all right so we want basically crons capris and memfrags the things that are actually lower on the scale of things we can get what we don't want is mount xp scrolls because uh we don't need them and even if you are new you still don't need them Mount XP scrolls. I don't know. You just most people do not need them. I think I saw a scroll. I saw two scrolls. What did we get? A lot of Memfrags, Hards and Sharps, Capris, Crons, Darn, Mount Scrolls. But yeah, I do appreciate it. This is all going for, or this is all going towards the, uh, whichever one comes first, Wusa or Megu Awakening, we'll make a Black Star weapon with them, and then we'll just go enhance it when that happens. So. Oh yeah, we got fail stacks that goes into the pile of lighting silver on fire. <clears throat> Alright, so I know that was like almost 10 minutes. I'll put a timestamp and uh, let's get to the main event. We I feel like I'm missing something. Alright, anyway. Main event time. We are going to be covering patch notes all right so where did we get to before um so basically this is the patch notes for on the global lab for, as of uh february 10th and keep in mind this is translated from google so if things just don't make sense blame google translate but either way usually when they make an announcement for a global labs um it usually comes to uh, NA and EU, like, within two to three weeks. So, this is for sure coming soon TM kind of thing. Uh, what we're going to be looking at is... Wizard body shape movement. I'm going to be honest. That's a lot of words. Just to tell me that they're changing the shape of a wizard. Big and shiny is very... Uh, let's see. I know Big and Shiny has a character called Fat Wizard. I wonder how he feels about that. Dang. Alright, so anyway. 
warrior changes. They're making it easier to play the warriors. Instead of two buttons, you got one button. Cool. Um, wizards. More connections. These will look like a lot of quality of life because I don't see numbers. Woosa. Uh, wait, hold on. Are Woosas called umbrellas? What the heck? Me trying to read Google translated notes. Yeah, that's a Woosa. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest. I I really enjoyed Woosa, actually. I liked it more than Megu. It's just Megu's uh, a lot more sh like stronger and better and basically every way um so i don't actually know what these skills are called in the live version but apparently these are more just like uh visual changes i think and your ability movement which is awesome okay megu changes i think megu okay so what i know from this is megu damage is getting nerfed but they're getting new skills so it's not really a nerf it's just like damage movement in terms of like let's say you had two skills that do a hundred damage each so like two skills that do 200 total damage this is just a very like general how to explain it now <clears throat> they're gonna have two more skills but the damage is lower so you'll have like four skills that do 50 damage instead of two skills that do 100 so that's how i see it but uh, like obviously that's more or less uh how it's going to work because um numbers are going to be different but they're getting more skills current skills getting lower damage um unfortunately i do not know the skills well enough by picture nor do i know before and after <clears throat> skill changes but it just shows you that i think overall from what i've seen and heard is that generally uh, Megu is going to be a lot smoother to play, which is a very good thing. I had a lot of complaints when I played it through my season as well. Just like the movement was kind of wonky and some of the skills you had to like animation cancel and learn to do that for a lot of them. But now it's supposedly going to be cleaner and there's going to be new skills. So that's good. Um, unfortunately, I don't really know half of these by name, but we'll see it. But anyway, here is more more or less the main event that we want to talk about. Okay, so contribution points for various nodes are getting changed. So no matter what you have before and after, you're probably going to get a refund on a lot of them. Um, if you want to calculate what you have and don't have already, you can read all of that. This is on just... How do you find these things? Uh, basically, you just Google Global Lab patch notes, and then you go to the thing and kind of how you do it on the live server uh, or the live website. You go to like updates, and then you click that, and then you it's in Korean. Then you right click Google Translate it. Easy. Either way, we're getting quite a few um, CP back. I think I have a few of these, so either way, what we're going to be doing after the change is putting them on more nodes for various um, things that we're going to use. Plus, we might connect or save them for the new region and put them there. We'll see how it goes. So I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> so basically, right now for this next change, um, workers for your nodes let me just show you in game your workers right here um generally you want artisans but it's very difficult to get it i think newer players don't even know how the system even works because like it's kind of unintuitive and so Honestly, what I've done in the later nodes, because it's very difficult, was like, if I found a professional, I would have just taken it. But nowadays, I do believe that if you are absolutely trying to min-max your workers, uh, goblins are the best ones. 
before it was like do you want humans or goblins and then i don't know like over the time over the years they kind of shifted <laughs> and so i think just nowadays 2023 goblins are the just best ones to get that's why they give you a lot of boxes for artisans so yeah i've never really like once i got it i figured i would just keep them because i'm too lazy nodes don't really i mean it's passive money but i never really cared enough to min max all of it all right so back on the notes um so every time your worker gets to a certain level you could do a promotion and it would take like one day for each of them now it's eight hours that's cool the last time i did any worker promotions was like maybe four years ago so that's good for all you new players out there um and then the promotion to be honest i don't think we ever had this information even back in the day so like the promotion test from like the difficulty this is the only one that really matters to be honest like if you if you're hiring workers from like the town realistically just go from like professional to artisan just if you get like a blue or a green one just re-roll over it if you get professional that's fine and then that's you can work from there <clears throat> so the ones you want to go for are professional to artisan and so here are the rates at level 30 and 30 to 50 percent i think that's good uh i never really bothered changing them over the past years I do believe that, like, if you are hard trying to min-max for, like, certain things, like trade crates and all that stuff, though trading is, like, a dead life skill. Everyone knows that. But, um, if you are trying to min-max, this is good for you now, because you don't have to spend as much energy. The amount of XP required when changing skills is 50 to 20 per... Wait, what? Hey, hold on. Um, yeah, I never, I never really got into the min max game for skills that much. I think I've done it before, but I haven't like, I don't, wouldn't be able to tell you what the best things to get it. I literally just, if I got an artisan worker, I was happy and got it to 30 and put it on a node. Increased probability of high rank workers appearing. That's very good because I noticed Ever since uh, Dregan, the rates have been mega low. I think even in Kama Sylvia, so that's probably, what, like five years ago or something? Four or five years ago? I stopped caring about, <clears throat> can I get an artisan or equivalent? But, um, so basically, the higher chance now. That's good. Um, bartering. Kind of a questionable one. So here's the thing, I enjoy bartering, but I know it's not for everyone. Bartering is one of those life skills that's really kind of like a semi-AFK thing where you just auto-path from point A to B while you're working from home or something, check back in five minutes, do it again, and you keep doing that another like 20 times. So as you guys know, I've actually made a lot of videos of this on like the tiers of nodes how to get them best way to get a carrick and all that stuff uh i don't what does this mean like the truck basically you could change six things to ten now <clears throat> so let me show you this in game a little bit oh yeah so i don't even know if my workers were showing from before but uh, this is what I had, and I think if you want to min-max Goblin all the way, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. So, right now, you see how you can exchange your... Um, you can exchange, like, a certain number, so like six of them from tier three to four. I think it'll be ten, if I'm reading that correctly, in the future, so that's good. So these numbers are going to be buffed. You get more barters in. Um, and for me personally, like, 
I've done ten, over 10,000 barters. I know there are people with like hundreds of thousands of barters, but when I play this game, I just want to do like, I don't always just want to barter all day. I just want to like get it done. So I like, I understand the basics, but I don't think I'm a master at it. Like bartering itself, easy to learn, hard to figure out like how to min max it, but it's easier now because you get more of them. And I think that's good because every certain number of barters, so like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 or something, uh, it unlocks another Margoria trade route. And that one is, um, so like, it makes things a lot easier for newer players to catch up in bartering. Barters will have signed contracts from like basically special deals and um, the things that you get from like the scrolls. So let me once again show you uh, if I am reading this correctly. So like sometimes you get like special barters and or sometimes they give you like special things like quest vouchers or support boxes and you get to do those requests and or you sell it for 100 mil easy money or literally just free goodies. So that's cool. Um, let's see what else reduce the amount of bloods. Bloods are very expensive these days. So yeah, I can understand why remove from tradable items. Uh, honestly, these are, I don't know why they remove these. I don't think any of these are extremely rare. I know mushrooms, like some mushrooms are hard to get, but I don't think all of these are. Unless they're just changing it to like normal ones, then that's fine. The items have been added for for sudden bartering. I think that means special deal or like the special bartering. So a strike crystal, that's pretty good. Light, four mono accessories. Does that mean like pick one of four or you get all four? A fairy of star. I don't actually know what that is. There's probably a like incorrect translation to what we have in the American one. Chapter four. Chapter four mono accessories or crow coins. I'm not sure how. There's no punctuations. I don't really understand how to read this. Uh. Okay, well, figure that out. 13 to 1700 crow coins. Cool. Golden shell, that's probably like this 5 to 10 mil items. Black crystal ornament bracelet. I don't know what that is. Chapter 4, Garanoa accessories. Basically the blue uh, life skill accessories. Um, I've always been on the fence about blue accessories, to be honest. Because unless you could buy it at Pen, you're better off going from Logia to Manos. Like realistically, uh, just in the long term, that's the way it is. You, I don't think you should ever try to enhance the blue accessories yourself. I just don't think it's a good use of your money. Just honest truth. Uh, the enhancement level of blue grade accessories required from or for sudden bartering has been changed. This is gonna get me. A sudden bartering, does that mean like a special one? <clears throat> Cagdom ring. Oh god, I don't think I could read all of these. Um After the change is what we want to look at. I, well, I don't know what light in chapter means, to be honest. But I think we're going to have to wait till that hits, uh, like, the official translated notes. The probability of the following items and sudden bartering has been changed. I think we just showed you this. And a lot more crow coins. The items, the following items have been removed from the bartering list. Dude, these... Hides are very expensive, uh, at least on NA. So, like, all of these three, I'm glad they're removing them. These are very expensive. 
And do you know what they're for? They're used to make uh, Krogdalo horse gear. At least some of them are, I think. So, yeah, I'm glad they're removing them. They're very expensive off the market as well. And I think most of the time they're like sold out. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing those are removed. Third level uh, trade item has been added, but it doesn't tell you what it is. Improved hunting matchlock and sniper rifle controls. Oh, God. Why did I keep changing these things? Remember? Okay, so I normal hunting, everyone knows how to do it. The sniper rifle hunting minigame, I've done it exactly one time. And I think it's like a dead life skill. Well, it's counted as hunting. But I don't think anyone ever does like the sniper rifle one. And uh, it's just like actually difficult well not difficult it's just kind of annoying to do so yeah if this change makes it easier to do hopefully more people do it that's good um fixed an issue where reloading on horseback after eating hunter's salad or various other foods the number of reloads decreased from two three for hunter level one or higher that was hard to read uh, this is a, this seems like a very specific bug that's in the game. Because, uh, when I hunt, I am definitely not using any of those. Because I am just using your standard life skill stuff. But, uh, good to know that they found an issue that, like, 1% of people had a problem with. And they're fixing it. Which leads me to believe that, you know how... When they talk about like, oh, we listen to feedback and we're changing things because people complained about it. And I'm here I am. I'm just wondering, where are they getting this feedback from? Because, okay, this is going to sound like a flex, but it's not really. Like, I'm a PA partner or BDO partner. I literally submit feedback along with everyone else. But the partners, we like, we know the GMs and CMs, and we're like, we give them stuff, and then where does that information go? I assume back to the Korean devs, and I can assure you, this is not an issue that I've ever heard. But like, I'm glad they're fixing it for the one percent. But I'm, it just makes me wonder where this information, what kind of feedback are they listening to? Where are they? getting this feedback from i don't even see this issue in the korean streamers that are partners as well so i'm just like okay cool i mean i'm glad they're fixing it but i wish you would fix more relevant issues but cool ah uh, okay so a note from the developers this is good news for adventurers who love housing content the following furniture, which had limited accusation routes, such as pole shop, can now be crafted. This is actually something I heard about uh, a few months ago or last year. And like what they wanted to do is make stuff that was currently on the pearl shop, like the furniture. And now you're able to craft it without spending real money, which I think is a good thing. Uh, in every game, I was always um, pretty excited for that. So the less money you as a player have to spend on a game, that's always good. I think that's good for just literally everyone. I'm glad this is a good change. Um, yeah. They deserve credit for that one. I think this is a good one. But I swear this this change over here with the hunting one. They have they must have like two different like feedback teams because one of them is like on top of it. Like they look these people. This is a good one. Whoever came up with that, whichever team, you deserve a raise. This one. Uh, oh, where'd you get your feedback from? Um. So basically all of this is probably stuff you could buy on the Pearl Shop right now. I wish they had different names instead of letters. That just makes things a lot more e uh, easier to read. But like, they're literally pictures. You can look at it on the Pearl Shop. Um, the furniture shop. This is currently Mountain of Eternal Winter on NA and EU at least. 
gonna be honest don't know where that is like well okay i know where it is but i don't know which house number that would be in the uh town oh uh, so learn about more stuff cool you can buy stuff from npcs got it nice daily challenge oh so you this is your daily um daily thing mercenary experience and mercenary skills so basically when you log in every day you get the choice of like what is it like two 100 scrolls or one 200 scroll kind of thing it's like everyone knows about it okay so i think they're changing it so that you receive both of them at once so it's like instead of four choices a day it's probably like less than four choices a day oh so you get like three scrolls or one scroll the 600 or something like that i don't know either way as long as if you get more for less clicks that's good good change i like it um okay so this is what it currently is yeah they, they outlined it right here so good change to making things quality of life better very good monster changes uh, I know what Sakraya is. Added a new buff for people who accidentally find Sakraya and get clapped. Uh, that's weird because I have to say, if you accidentally find Sakraya, I feel like you're doing something wrong. Because let me just show you in game on how this works. Here is Sakraya underwater. It is right here in the middle of the ocean. There, you don't accidentally find this spot. And even if you do, so let's say you have your boat, right? You're in Ilya Island. Uh, so here's how people get to Sakraya. Like unironically, if you want to grind, you go to Ilya Island, you run all the way to the top of over here, you dive underwater, escape, escape, and then you go to the spot where like upper Sakraya. And then that is one way to do it. Otherwise, if you have a boat, you take your boat to like somewhere over here and then jump off your boat, dive underwater. It takes you to do the same thing. They're adding a buff there because people somehow are going there and apparently getting clapped, even though it tells you like there's an obvious AP and DP recommendation. So buff there are basically added buffs in here i will say if it's your first time doing underwater sakraya that's a little bit different um even then with the information we have now i would recommend people going there with like 261 to 269 ap minimum and then once you're higher than that you're fine however i don't really know i mean it's good that they're adding a buff to this spot but it makes me wonder why, because the Krya is not a spot that you find accidentally. Um, so yeah, let's see. The trash loot is being basically tripled almost, like 2.8% or something. 21 to 6100. That's good. That's a lot. Probability of obtaining a red shard when obtaining... Or hunting monsters that are increased by 20%. Dude, that's a lot. To give you an idea on NA, the red shard is basically like 200 mil. That's a lot. Good change. Um, Underwater change. Some of the... I think this is the... Okay, so there's trash loot in underwater, and then there's other trash loot that comes from, the, like, the machine things, right? Um, that one's getting buffed. Good, that's a lot. So, Zethian, if you're seeing this, I know you, you grind Sakraya all day, every day. You must be excited. That loot. Nice. Um, okay, so this is what the uh, buff that they're adding is. 
monster damage and damage reduction and item drop rate that's good knowledge and quests okay so the aquila's i this is basically the thing you do every day for 40 days if you want to get your carrick you do these dumb quests and i actually like some days i feel like doing that some day, most of the time i don't but maybe we'll make a video on just doing it i think i have one actually but we'll make an updated one but basically we go out into the ocean do three quests and then you got to do like three more quests that takes about an hour and that's uh kind of obnoxious but you gotta do what you gotta do completion conditions are they bruh they used to just be kill one now you have to kill five of them but you get more rewards. What about the people that just want a Carrick? They don't want to kill five of them. They just want their Carrick. Uh, daily quest trade improvements. Barter five times, barter ten times. Get more good stuff. Cool. Conquest and node wars. Node wars and sieges as we know them. I just like spaced out. Sorry. Uh, existing. When the total number of enemy fort destructions, killing, or 20. Oh god. So, like. Okay. They're nerfing it so people don't just get free money. Okay, so basically, here's how it works. If you go to Node Wars and your kill death between everyone in your guild is 20, you get rewards for going to war what they're changing it to is 50 so basically if you're just feeding your guild has to feed more and you get rewards uh this is this seems unless i'm reading this wrong that just seems like it's making it worse for rewards they want people to actually participate instead of throwing for rewards i I see where they're coming from. I think it's a good change, but some people, they just want rewards. And let's be real. Node Wars, rewards, they need to be buffed. Um, I think I read this somewhere else on a different translation in the Calpheon Ball. So this is the new ship that's coming to the game. And it's not something that you can, I think, own permanently. It's like one of those rental ships. However, it's supposed to be better than a Carrick. I think uh, the official name will be called like the Dreadnought or something. Uh, I, I remember hearing that during the Calpheon Ball when I was watching it. So basically, this is a rental ship for people who are too lazy to get a Carrick themselves. But they want like something cool to look at. Role players, I guess you can say. I... I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest. Because, like... I get that they want to add something for people who don't spend literally hours in the ocean. I think that's a good idea. However... If you are making it straight up better... Than the thing that people have worked for... For literally months to get a Carrick. And then... Nowadays, like someone could just rent it for like a billion silver or something or a contribution whatever and then completely dumpster people who own Carex. that's where i think it gets a little bit weird um i think what they should do is they better tone this to make it like equivalent or something like that but i don't know if this is a guild one a guild ship that's fine <clears throat> And what they should do, if this is a guild ship, they better start adding, like, nodes or node wars in the ocean. Because that's literally what it would be for. 
Um, oh, so this is the Efarious Star that we looked at a while ago. I didn't know what I have that. and allows you to obtain a certificate for seven day. Goody. Cool. If you participate in a conquest war and win, you receive one Efarious Star. Okay, so it is a guild ship. All right. Well, okay, so I take that back then. And if it's a guild ship, that's fine. But then that leads me to believe that they're going to start adding nodes in the ocean. Or, well, like, they have nodes in the ocean. But, like, node wars for that? I don't know. There's, like, very few nodes where bringing a boat to a node war is actually useful. So, I feel like the only time that would be useful is if you're doing your weekly Vel and you want to take your guild there. But the hardest part is finding a driver who wants to actually drive everyone to Vel, and then you have to like do everything. And no one really wants to do that, to be honest, because if you have your own character, you're just voting yourself there. Um, so yeah, I, I have a lot of mixed opinions on this Dreadnought ship. What do you guys think? I think overall, it's a good thing. However, they better like balance that properly because ship owners are going to be big mad for that. Okay. An effect has been added easier to recognize when your aggress fever is full. <sighs> Listen, I, that's that's probably a good thing, but is this really the thing you want to add to the game when there's so many issues? Like, let me give you an example. Here's one thing that I think it should be added, and it affects everyone. If you you could V out of any CC in the game right now, if you get knocked down or certain other ones, you cannot V out of it, and like it, you should be able to V out of any CC. And I think that would be o overall good for literally everyone. That's one change that I would do. But they want to add a flashing light to show you when your aggress fever is full. Noted. Cool. Well, that's about all the patch notes and my opinions for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know this is a very long video. And um, hopefully you guys stuck around. But... Yeah, thank you guys for all of you who made it to the end. If you're new to the channel and like what you saw, hit that subscribe button. I do like to make videos like this every week or so when something relevant comes out. And um, yeah, we like to talk about it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed my commentary along with that. Also, I want to say thank you guys again for all the like uh, Valentine's gifts as well. Before we head out, let me just show you. This is from like... Where did it go? Oh, these uh, dark chocolate things that are energy. We saved them from over the years. And where did they go? Like, literally my inventory. This, like, disappeared into my the void of random nonsense and the storage. Oh, here it is. Chocolates, and then... These are actually most of them from the years ago. But anyway, with that said, it's been an hour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you tomorrow.